Hello, my name is Sophia Rowland. I am a senior studying advertising, and the case that I chose today was the Tinker v. Des Moines case. So, in this case, Tinker is the plaintiff and Des Moines is the defendant. The full case name is Tinker v. Des Moines Independent Community School District. So, the cause of action of this case was the parents and the students came together that attended the Des Moines Public School and filed a suit against the school district for violating their children's First Amendment rights. So this all started in 1965. A group of students met up at each other's houses and made a plan to protest the Vietnam War. This plan included wearing black armbands to school um, to silently and peacefully protest the Vietnam War. The school district heard of their plan, the students' plan, and before school could start, um, they came up with a policy that bans the armbands. If the students refused to take off the armbands, it would end in a suspension. They implemented this policy because they thought the armbands would distract um, the process of teaching and the learning environment. So despite the policy, three students did show up that day wearing black armbands to protest the Vietnam War. These three students included Mary Beth Tinker, John Tinker, and Christopher Eckhart. Um, these students were later asked to remove them, and they did not, so they were suspended. Um, the students and parents later came together and filed a lawsuit um, against the public school for violating their freedom to rights, freedom to speech rights. Um, so the proceedings included. It started off that the case was first brought to the U.S. District Court for Southern District, Iowa. Um, this case was dismissed, and they sided with the school district's position and ruled that the armbands could be disruptive to learning. Um, this case was then appealed and brought to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit, in which it was dismissed again, and they sided with the school district, agreeing that it could be disruptive to learning. Um, the students appealed the case again, and it was brought to the Supreme Court of the United States, in which they won by a 7-2 to two decision. So the issue at hand was, are public school students protected by the First Amendment when expressing their views through symbolic speech when wearing black armbands at school? Another issue was that, did the school district violate the students' First Amendment rights by creating a policy that banned the armbands from being worn? Um, after the case proceeded in the Supreme Court, they decided that um, the public school students do maintain their First Amendment rights to freedom of speech when wearing the black armbands on school property. The reasoning behind their um, decision was that they stated neither students nor teachers shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. So although they are on school grounds it is public school grounds so the first amendment upholds still and is intact and they are still protected by it so as students as soon as students step onto school property their first amendment rights still stands including teachers as well um the students wore the armbands peacefully and they did not disrupt teaching therefore they uphold the pure the act of pure speech um this was another reasoning why um the supreme court decided to rule on the side of the students, then that their First Amendment right still stands. Um, since this case happened, since Tinker v. Des Moines, um, this case has been addressed in other school free speech cases, um, which have evolved ever since. This case did set a precedent that has been used and addressed in other free school cases. Um, schools cannot censor student speech unless it direct disrupts the educational process, and if the free speech includes vulgar or offensive speech. Thank you.